Injury updates are available for several wrestlers. Our own Dave Meltzer addressed the status of Brian Danielson, Mercedes Monet, and Bandito in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Brian Danielson has been out of action since Forbidden Door 2 when he suffered a broken arm in his match against Kazuchika Okada. He underwent surgery to repair the injury on July 3rd and was expected to be out for three months. Meltzer wrote in Friday's newsletter that Danielson has been told he will be able to return in October. It could be a photo finish to see if he's cleared in time for Wrestle Dream in Seattle on October 1st. Mercedes' situation is not as clear. She was shown in the stands at Wembley Stadium, but Tony Khan emphasized on yesterday's media call that Mercedes will not be cleared by Wrestle Dream. Meltzer wrote in Friday's newsletter that her foot is still in a cast and she was using a wheelchair at the airport in London. Bandito suffered a triangular fibrocartilage complex injury, which is bones that connect the forearm to the wrist in his match against Kenoshke Takeshita on the June 14th AEW Rampage taping. It is believed that he had surgery to repair the injury in early July and is on track to return sometime this month. AEW head Tony Khan addressed the media on Thursday ahead of Sunday's all-out pay-per-view in Chicago. Tony had little to say regarding the CM Punk and Jack Perry altercation on Sunday. He was asked by Jim Barceloni if Punk will be part of All Out and responded by saying that the company is continuing to investigate an incident that occurred prior to All In. Tony said he always tries to be honest with the fans and will provide an update as soon as he is able to do so. He was later asked if an answer to Punk being on the pay-per-view will be available before Sunday. He responded that it is their goal to provide an update by then. Tony also declined to answer a question about a reported contentious conversation he had with CM Punk on Sunday, stating he cannot comment on any incidents. I, uh, you know, I can't comment on any incidents or anything, but I was I was really proud of everybody who wrestled on All In. The AEW president was far more willing to speak about Mercedes Monet during the call. He referred to the former Sasha Banks as one of the best wrestlers on the planet and spoke in glowing terms about the former IWGP Women's Champion. However, Tony Khan emphasized that Mercedes is not cleared and likely will not be available for Wrestle Dream on October 1st. I think one of the great stars that's been involved in New Japan Pro Wrestling, who I have a ton of respect for, is Mercedes Monet. And I think we have a good relationship, and I also think she is one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet. And it was great to have Mercedes Monet at AEW All In. She's not available to wrestle right now, but when she does wrestle, I think she's as good as anyone and one of the best in the world. I have so much respect for her as a competitor. And certainly, uh, you know, she's one of the top stars in the world. I don't know that she would be physically cleared at that time. I'm not expecting that because she had a major injury. But when she is cleared, that's somebody we're really interested in working with. And also, she's had great experiences in New Japan. She's been a great champion there. And uh, I think that's something to keep an eye on also uh, in the future for both companies. And I definitely would love to have... Uh, involvement from New Japan from the men and the women and, and get as many of the IWGP champions and the strong champions involved in the show. Mercedes has been out of action with an ankle injury she suffered at New Japan Strong Resurgence in May. Additionally, Tony Khan also noted that All In could end up being the company's second biggest pay-per-view event in terms of purchases. He further spoke of the event's success by saying it brought in more money than Starcade ever did and sold more tickets than any WrestleMania. And certainly All In, uh, speaking of pay-per-view, this will also be the biggest pay-per-view month in the history of AEW by far across these four weeks because uh, All In was the most successful AEW pay-per-view in well over a year, one of the biggest ever, and will probably end up, uh, if not but in the top two, uh, would definitely be in the top three, and when it's all said and done, it could end up being our number two pay-per-view of all time. Um, so this will surely end up being our best month ever on pay-per-view, and in addition to best month of live events, I know those are kind of sometimes old-fashioned things in wrestling, uh, live event, ticket sales, and, and pay-per-view, but there's still very much real revenue streams for the business, and uh, this is going to be a great weekend, I promise. We're going to have a great time with StarCast, and I'm very excited 
about the pay-per-view show all out on Sunday. Tony Khan was also asked about having All In and All Out on back-to-back -back weekends. He noted that he looked into the idea of having the two shows offered as a pay-per-view bundle, but there were too many obstacles with carriers. Tony teased that it'll be interesting to see on what platform All Out could air on next year. Tony also noted that when he was fantasy booking as a child, it was a dream of his to have bundled pay-per-views on back-to-back -back weekends. He seemed surprised that this was not something that pay-per-view carriers are able to do. AEW All In from London's Wembley Stadium wasn't just a hit at the box office, but on pay-per-view as well. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer provided some context and specifics regarding Tony Khan's statements that the pay-per-view is trending toward the second most purchased pay-per-view in company history. Meltzer said that the current estimates for both streaming and linear buys put All In between 20 to 30 percent higher than recent shows, which have been in the 140,000 buy range. To which he wrote, if those numbers hold up, that would indicate 168,000 to 184,000. A lot is dependent upon late buys, which are a high percentage for pro wrestling these days. Meltzer noted that those late buys will place it anywhere from second to fourth all time for AEW. AEW's most purchased pay-per-view of all time is 2021's All Out, which generated 215,000 buys thanks to the return of CM Punk. March 2022's Revolution brought in 175,000 buys, while May 2022's Double or Nothing did 165,000. With three pay-per-views left to go on this year's calendar, as far as what's been announced, all In is the company's most purchased of this year, beating Revolution, Double or Nothing, and Forbidden Door. The final gate revenue has not been revealed, but is said to be over $10 million. Meltzer also noted that merchandise for the day was in a $1.4 million range. The show was a first in several ways for AEW, which included them running an afternoon pay-per-view for the first time, in addition to their first show overseas. More than 81,000 fans were in attendance, and the second All In was already announced for next August in the same venue. Orange Cassidy will officially defend the AEW international title at All Out. Cassidy successfully defended the title against Penta El Cero Miedo. As a result, Cassidy will now move to All Out this Sunday in Chicago, where he will face John Moxley. After Cassidy won on Wednesday, he cut a promo in the ring saying he doesn't talk much, but he said he was hurt, and with each title defense, the backpack was getting a little heavier but he told Moxley that he was going to need more than a fork to beat him. Moxley came to the ring and the two had to stare down to close the show. That's a wrap for this video. As always, keep an eye out here on F4W Online for all of your news updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you on the next one.